My name is Peter from Spin, and I'm here with the fantastic Ted Leo. Thank you for saying so. <laughs> uh, first of all, I wanted to uh, talk about the fact that you're here tonight. Bruce Springsteen is playing. And the uh, one of the first times I ever saw you play live was in our office oh, at yeah. Spin a couple years ago. Just you and an electric guitar. And you covered Spirit of Radio by Rush, oh, yeah. which was great. <laughs> and, oh, and uh, yeah. Oh, finish, sorry. And, yeah. and uh, you know, going through that whole solo diligently. And you played, you played Dance in the Dark as well. I did, and I, I seem to remember that that was in part inspired by somebody in your office who was just kind of hand like throwing around this bottle of Patron. This is true. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there, and, and you were maybe a smidge under the weather right. and thought that the Patron might be able to kind of satiate your sickness a little bit. I think it worked. It worked. Otherwise, you might not have played a Bruce Springsteen cover or tried to fight through the Rush solos. I probably would have anyway, yeah. but not in such good spirit. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, I mean, you're known, you've, you've done many covers over the years, kind of for fun, on This Is a Lark, so you know, we were excited to get those two. But uh, yeah, thanks. is there anything new in the repertoire cover-wise that sort of emerged over the years? Um, yeah, we actually we did an EP this last fall that was a benefit for um, a legal fund in Minneapolis that was representing people who were arrested during the convention. Republican National Convention. Right, totally. And um, we did a, a cover of a song called uh, I Got Your Number by a band called Coxpara, which is kind of a, uh, it's a, how to describe it? It's, it's, a, it's kind of like a, a, a questioning media bias song. Gotcha. Uh, you sort of took a took a shift, and the last record came out on Touch and Go. Mm -hmm. Touch and Go's had kind of a rough couple months, and so what, a lot of people are wondering what is sort of going to be the next direction for you as far as, as far as releasing music. Well, we we already have a, like a ton of new stuff um, because we we began working on a new record last year actually and didn't finish it. Um, which may have been a mixed blessing at this point, um, but it also means that that kind of uh, that uh, deadline pressure dissipated, mm -hmm. you know. And I and I kept writing, and I think I keep writing better and better songs. So we we have enough to put out an album, but I actually feel like I want to just wait and keep writing. Nobody's like banging down my door going, "We need a new album," by you know. So right, <laughs> you know, there's plenty of bands out there releasing plenty of albums. So we'll get it out. We'll get it out soon, hopefully. Yeah. But, yeah. And you had a little bit of a personnel change as well in the band. Yeah, that, that was like a couple, couple years ago. Like, at this point, actually, it was a couple years ago. Yeah, I yeah. feel like I saw like maybe it was uh, like the last show with the bass player. Uh, at the pool, at McCarran, the pool. McCarran yeah, Park so like in two Brooklyn. Summers ago. Yeah, it was two summers wow, ago. Wow, time yeah. flies. Mm -hmm. Indeed. So, um, as far so, what can as far as some of the new stuff is that going to be is making it into your sets now? Yeah, as a matter of fact, like a lot of this tour that we're on, the the focus has been new stuff and B sides, you know, mm -hmm. deep cuts, deep cuts, old old stuff and new new stuff. But, so. but just within the sort of Ted Leo brackets, or even further back. Oh yeah, not not in other bands. Okay, none of the other bands. No, no. Okay, you're on Twitter a fair amount as well. Yeah, you could say you might have an addiction. already today from Bonner quite a bit. Yeah. Right. So, uh, how and, the, and especially for you in a cycle where you're like, we've got some new music, we might put it out sometime. What what do those tools enable you to do as an artist? Well, for one thing, I think that uh, someone in my position who you know has has uh, always existed on this level where uh, you know there's not there's not a massive um, fourth wall on the stage between you and the audience and there's not a massive uh, um, infrastructure gap between you and your audience you know it, it even just playing a show feels very much like a conversation to me and I think that um, a lot of these um, a lot of these digital outlets um, I've come to see it's just a way to just a way to kind of carry on that conversation. That's why I like Twitter a lot, actually, because it's just, you know, people. I think people are, you know, people who poo poo it think it's just like, why do you know, why do I want to hear that this guy got a cup of coffee today, you know? But right. that's, you know, that's not like. How, I mean, maybe some people use it like that, but usually it's like, it's it's really just like micro blogging. You know, right. you take a picture of something, you put it up, you know, people see it, they share it around, comment on it. You can have some back and forth, but there's not quite as much pressure as there is with email or, or blog, you know. Right. Um, but ma mainly, I just, I just, it's just another, really, just kind of fun way for for me to feel like I'm continuing to interact with people who 
care enough to pay attention, you know? Right. And, um, and so, you know, to that end, like, uh, before we left on this tour, as I mentioned, like, we do have a lot of new stuff. So, like, I tweeted a link to a new song. You know, it's just like, just get, just, you know, just keep it going. Really, yeah. You know? like, yeah. Any, is there any sort of timetable or plan? You're just like, n no label situation. You're just going to. Um, no, no confirmed label situation no confirmed label as situation. yet. Um, but I, my intent is to have a, a record done by the end of the summer. So it'll be out soon thereafter. Cool. So Jeff, I'm assuming that's Jeff. He wants to know who your busy, biggest musical influence is. Jeff's not actually listening. No, I'm, <laughs> kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Jeff's flirting, <laughs> I think maybe. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, there's there's so many. Uh, I, I'll say, I'll say this. Uh, lately, I've actually been really kind of going back to roots uh, of mine from that you know stuff that i was into 25 years ago um like amoebics a lot of crusty punk stuff um and also on the other end of the spectrum a lot of you know a, a lot of uh a lot of the kind of like pub rock um songwriters that i was into early on like nick lowe uh, even like Robin Hitchcock, who I saw walking around before and was too scared to go shake his hand <laughs> and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Right, stuff, Thanks. Cool. Awesome. So, uh, 130 tomorrow. 130. Bright sunlight. Bring your sunblock. Well, it's in a tent, so you'll be all right. Well, yeah, but still, <laughs> you know. Uh, but pleasure to see you. Thanks. And uh, good luck with everything coming, going ahead and going forward. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Right Cheers. Cheers.